the heavy arrow retains more energy downrange. All right, video two. You have to forgive my voice this morning. I'm fighting a cold. We're going to talk about drag today. It's going to be the introduction to drag. First off, what is drag? It's a force that opposes motion of the projectile, in this case, the arrow. What does drag do? Well, drag applies a force <clears throat> over the distance the arrow is shot, reduces the arrow's energy. From the previous video, you'll remember that force times the distance is work, and that's a form of energy. One thing to understand is that the drag of a well-tuned arrow, and that is important, a well-tuned arrow, is almost always going to act directly along the length of the shaft. The formula, what you see here. Now, we're going to explain some of these terms. Density, that's just the air density. V is the arrow's velocity. And then the coefficient of drag. This is a experimental determined number, typically. Wind tunnel tests, stuff of that nature. And I was actually able to find a Japanese study and that's where I've got my coefficient of drag from, was from that study. And then the projected area of the arrow that faces the drag. Now what does that mean? It means if you're looking down the shaft, right, so at the front you'd see this area, and at the very end, you're gonna see the fletchings in that profile. So that's the areas that we're talking about here. When you add uh, broadheads in that nature on there, you change the projected area that's exposed to drag. That's why a broadhead is typically going to fly heavier because the broadhead is going to induce more drag than a field point will. And the point is, why do we care? Well, we could estimate that if over a one foot distance, the arrow velocity doesn't change. We're going to assume it's constant. This is the basis of this ballistic calculator that we're going to talk about in a minute. It assumes the velocity over that one foot distance is constant. It just allows us to estimate the force of drag to be constant rather than changing. What we find out from this ballistics calculator, how much energy will we lose at distance? Let's say 60 yards, for example. We, we remember from the last video that the energy starting out was constant almost for every arrow. Let's get into what happens over distance. And it turns out the heavier object is more resistant to change. It does not slow down as rapidly. So we've got some percent of change on the screen here, it'll pop up. And you see the light arrow loses about 17% of its energy from launch to 60 yards. The 500-ish grain arrow lost just over 12.5%. So that's 5% less, right? So you have 5% more energy at 60 yards than you do of the light arrow. Now remember, they all started with the same energy. And now we get to the, the heavy, heavy arrow, the 666. And I apologize for repeatingly call it 705. But the anyway, the heavy arrow lost 9.76% of its energy from zero to 60 yards. That's not nearly as significant as 364 to 507. And you will experience a taper. There is a diminishing return of how much mass do I add versus how much energy retention do I get. And that's going to be dependent upon your own preferences. All right, moving on. So all this has come down to say is that the heavy arrow retains more energy downrange. Why do we care about energy downrange? Energy and specifically work, which we have talked about now in every video, work is a force times a distance. When we talk about penetration into a target, a kill shot on an animal, we need the arrow to travel a certain distance through the animal. So we need a distance. Then we'd solve this from an energy perspective. We know our kinetic energy at the animal. So the question is, what's the force? And this happens to be the force the animal is putting on the arrow to resist that arrow going through it. This is things like hide, tissue, bone, and those are resistive forces. And that is what we're gonna talk about in the next video is penetration. And what are resistive forces? Can we estimate or determine resistive forces? Do they have any dependency on how fast the arrow is traveling? For example, drag was dependent upon the velocity squared is there a similar relationship with the resistance of the arrow going through the animal? 
I hope everyone is getting a good sense out of this. Hopefully it's not too boring for you. If you're enjoying this video series, please give us a like and subscribe. All right.